I really don't need any help because I know why I voted to leave and it wasn't to make my country poorer, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't to increase unemployment, it wasn't to do that. But it was in order, call me old-fashioned, that all the legislation that pertains to this country is actually made in this Parliament. And that if the people of Great Britain don't like what the government is doing, they can kick us out. That's democracy. And so when I stood on the A59 on the 23rd of June with some leave banners, inhaling all the lead from the passing lorries who tooted madly when they saw the signs, uh, I knew that we were making history on that day. And then sadly, of course, when we got back here, all the excitement of we're leaving, we're leaving, then all of a sudden the sclerosis came in, the paralysis came in. And at one stage I thought the best we could hope for was Brexit in name only, that we'd be in some form of customs union, that's not Brexit, that we'd be justifiable by the European courts, that's not Brexit, that we'd have to pay in money to access their single market, that's not Brexit. I know why people voted to leave the European Union, and it wasn't Brexit in name only. It was that we, when we leave on the 31st of January, we are then a third country, and then when we have left the implementation period at the end of 2020, Great Britain, the United Kingdom of Northern Ireland and Great Britain, will be an independent country again. We can start to look forward to the future with such optimism, which is displayed by the Prime Minister every time he comes to the dispatch box. There is a positivity and an energy about him and about our country, because he, despite the referendum campaign, which told us uh, that unemployment would go up, that there would be an immediate recession, and it would be a disaster for the United Kingdom if we voted to leave the British people, the plucky British people, decided not to listen uh, to the gloom and doom they decided that they knew better about their country. And so I look forward to those trade deals with the European Union, with the United States of America, with the vast majority of countries who seem to manage somehow or other operating outside of the European Union. And I think we've got an incredibly great future for our country. And on that note, Sir Roger, can I wish all members on all sides, because it's only been a week since we were re-elected, and it was a gruelling campaign, let's be fair, I've still got frostbite. I just want to wish all members here and all the staff that look after us a very Merry Christmas and a happy 2020 with an independent United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah.